So have we started recording again yet, mate, or not? Still, I didn't stop. Um, I've I've just had to use a mobile hotspot because my actual house internet just dropped off. So all that stuff we, I mean, actually, was, me and Nathan were talking about was recorded. No, none of it was. Oh, good. Oh. Good, because we, 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 we did something that we shouldn't have done. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if you gentlemen want to start an OnlyFans uh, as an extra source of income, <laughs> that's on you. That's great. You tune into that to see me and me me buff. We've got um, now that some of the football's back. Obviously, we're out coaching more now. Uh, I haven't been out yet, to be honest. Been really, really busy with my new job. Um, so I'm over the country, really enjoying it. Dying back to the Satyam case, we said there's my other role with Leisure Leagues as head of the refereeing and, and the UK development director uh, of Leisure Leagues. Leisure Leagues, referee from here. Is um, we 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 know that referee's name who. Uh, the player's name, who was sat, sat young. And uh, we banned him for life. He's never going to be able to play football, live side football, in his name. And because you register with leisure leagues, it's uh, very easy to monitor. You know, it's, you know, it's, he's gone, he's done, as far as we're concerned. And if, if we can do it, and we had the devils of under 38 of football, you know, what, you still be the FA count to it. And we see these QR codes now. It'd be so easy to bring in an ID card now. And the year said about it yeah. in here. Just have a QR code. Yeah. QR codes. There you go. There you go. There you go. Up his age. You can't play. Don't worry. Well, this is the thing everyone was saying, you know, oh, it can't be done. It's a logistical nightmare. It's this, it's that. So many excuses for why it was impossible. But like with so many things during this pandemic, having so many of the workforce work from yeah. home, I can't do it. It's impossible. Everyone's got to come into the office. Suddenly yeah. you can have 90% of your workforce working from home. In the exact same way, you can now have every single player registered for track and trace. Um, now you know exactly who's at your games so that when you do need to punish someone, um, you, you've got their details. You know exactly who is there. I'm using, uh, I've been using an app. I think it's called Eve Pass. Uh, I'll just have a look. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's called, it's called Eve Pass. And uh, they're using that. A couple of Northern League clubs are using that when you turn up to the ground. Um, and you, you, you scan your QR code and you say that you've arrived. And then as you leave, you check out. Mm. And uh, so they know how long everybody was there. They, don't, they know who was there. And, and it's actually a free, basically, alternative to the NHS track and trace because I, I, one manager did tell me, I think it was £300 for them to be fully involved in that. And, and it, it, it was, a, it was a, obviously a considerable investment. But they came up with an alternative by using this, this pass. They have list of names and details and everybody who's obviously signed up to the app has got they might use their details to sign up to the app so they know who all the users are they know who's checked in how long they've been there and all of that so you know there are many many ways to skin a cat and do the track and trace system yeah. and it doesn't cost money so I, I think that um again if you want to talk about identification even not not even looking at it from a track and trace perspective or a, an attendance perspective to make sure they don't break the attendance limits um, I mean Got, um, one of our partners uh, find my kit. Put it up here, actually, please. Find yep. my kit. Yep. He um, he sponsored a, a few of our events. Did some of the Bobby Madeley one. So it allowed us to be able to afford to fly Bobby Madeley over from Holland. I'll do all that. So that was really really good. And he um, he <laughs> he's a real good guy. Now he, he that's a QR code that you put on your kit. You got a piercing one QR code on your kit. Your trainees, key rings, everything. And that's identifiable to you. You know, I've asked him to look at uh, doing that as a track and trace method, which we could go to the FA for dead easy. I think it's like two pounds a person forever. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Not, not, not that hard, but we'll, um, we'll look into that again for you. But it's like the simple QR codes. Everyone has their own QR codes. You have the referee, he's got the app, just scan it, bang, done, job done. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's such a scope for the send everything digital, team sheets, match payments, yeah. discipline reports. Um, this is the perfect scenario 
to have that funded, developed, and launched um, from grassroots right right the way up. Um, you know, That's the environment as well, Hans. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Not it is. Yeah, not using loads of paper. Well, everyone's going mm. on about the cost of of bringing something like this in, but that cost over time would be mitigated against the the costs of the current system. Um, yeah. Once once the app is made and developed, it doesn't take that much to just maintain. No, no, and and it'd be a safer game, wouldn't it? Yeah, one hundred percent would. Safer game, but I think, but the the, the F word now that we're able to use with the FA is funding. Yeah, that's that the foot saw. You know, just leaked documents. Obviously, we have to get a confirm that they're going to basically kill futsal and the national teams are being disbanded and the coaches all at the moment not confirmed by the FA but a leaked document in the Daily Telegraph yesterday flash that up if you want so as well yeah. saying that they're going to, because of the funding and cuts they've got to give back and they're going to announce these be done this season I don't know if anyone's being maybe done and uh, um, the FA referees departments it would be our general concern but I'm sure there's a few people in there that shouldn't be in place, so maybe they would go, but that's personal opinion. I think we've got a couple of really good uh, referees as well at Futsal FIFA, I'm talking about here, uh, Martin, and I know that there's one in Nottinghamshire that's a particularly top uh, FIFA. Yeah, really. Yeah. We've yeah. got, got one in the North West, we've got Pete, Peter Nurse, um, the chairman of the St. Helens RA. Yeah. So, and James Gerrard, give James Gerrard, he's a good Futsal one, I don't think he's FIFA. But yeah. my, my James Gerard, good lads who went down to Holland Open. Yeah, yeah think, I remember that lad. Yeah. If we if we're killing the refs, uh, opportunities to do games, that that you know that I mean obviously I, 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 yeah, this is what you've just said there about this late document is it's total news to me. I didn't know anything about that, but just hearing it and knowing about obviously the the, the FIFA futsal referees we've got, if we are sort of putting the kibosh on all these. Uh, opportunities for them to referee particularly good standard futsal games then how are these referees going to be nominated for major competitions how they're going to be nominated to be in 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 really good games and, and to represent this country and to represent the FA as well I think that that, that would obviously be the, the sadness and the real concern uh, if that news was, was yeah, accurate I think also we, futsal in the beginning to me uh, why FIFA chose futsal over five or six sides, to me, I, I don't know why they come to that conclusion. You need to, all right, the partition figures were quite good at the time. But like, you need a different pitch, you need a different ball, you need more referees. You could, you know, that in itself makes it difficult to develop a game. Mm. When five or sides are already established, they don't get me wrong, from my position, but leisure leagues, where there were leaders in five or sides, we, we, we also work with the International Soccer Federation, which is the governing body of the five, six, seven, and eight sides. FIFA just aren't interested in it. Now, our figures are going through the roof, absolutely through the roof. Yeah. We give, we give opportunities to referees to, to referee on the international stage before our games are outside. So I think when you look at what they created with futsal, they were always going to, always going to be limited. Um, like I said, the pitch is different. Uh, the balls are different. You need more referees. It's traditionally with South American sort of. Yeah. You know, yeah, it was that blend of football that was coming through. So it was always going to have its challenges, and then FIFA chose beach soccer as well. But by itself, that's limited. A, you need a beach. If you're playing on a beach, you need weather. You need good weather. You don't get that over here. So it was never going to take off over here, was it? In many other countries. So I think we. That's why we blast it. We think people made missed a trick by not getting behind five, six, seven side. And we'd be glad to say that under the Leslie's banner, we've got all of it, and we're giving the referees opportunities to referee with Mark Lattenberg last year with Bobby Maidley yeah. who'll be bringing the referees in but these opportunities are there outside the affiliated game and I think people need to realise that people need to realise that you know, when they represent futsal the futsal games that, the, the, that get shown on TV national and nowhere near as high as the coverage we get in our mm-hmm. five-side games. nowhere near 300 million people on view, um, viewers on Facebook yeah, that's, that's more than the football could absolutely dream of. Yeah, so I think that again, though, uh, Martin, does it, mm-hmm. it, do you not agree that it comes down to the coaching side and, and the technical side that a lot of people who are uh, decision makers here are thinking about? Um, you know, obviously, I, I know that the, the, uh, was it the Dutch? Is it Curva? The, the Dutch situation with the, with the 
there, there was a big concern about 10 years ago, maybe a little bit more about the fact that English players were only able to kick the ball in England internationals. I think they looked at the England international team at something like 2010 World Cup and only one of them was what you would deem as two-footed, whereas I think there was only two or three in the Dutch national team that weren't both, you know, both footed. And I think that they looked at what could they do to improve that side of things with 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 having ambidextrous players who could play the ball just as well with both feet and it's something that they wanted so that they, they looked at futsal as, as really the answer to that because they, they also saw that there was a lot of quality with the, with the Brazilian players as well and I don't know if you tried to strike a futsal ball but it's like kicking a medicine ball yeah it's, it's heavy, very, isn't it? very very heavy and a bit flat yeah, you can't. It's not one that you could hit from thirty yards in the top corner. It just wouldn't rise, mm. and you'd probably break your foot. So I think that I think it's always been around that whole that technical pass, 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 pass because you can't strike it. I don't. I, in fact, in fact, I, I don't quote me on this because like, I don't know the rules. But I'm fairly certain there are certain areas where you, you basically you're not you're not allowed to strike the ball anyway. I think you can only score from maybe inside the box. Or something yeah, like that. Yeah. there is. Yeah, but I think going back to your point with the ball, the ball is intentionally flat, so it doesn't bounce as much. So it's yeah. hard to the first touch. So I think it's so it helps the first touch really. So um, I think that side of it, but it's it's just look at it in real. Let's be honest here. I know I'm biased because I'm you know in a, a family in, in the lesser leagues five a side. I was as football really taken off. No, I, don't think it has. I, don't think it, I don't think it has, but I think it's like I said, I think it's a great shame for the referees. Like I, I think it was Peter Nurse, wasn't it, that and said and Mark Burkett and people like that. I think it's a great shame for them who worked incredibly hard. Yeah, they didn't get a profile. It, it, you know, if you look at you know have you seen futsal on the telly getting major coverage anyway? I've never mm-hmm. ever seen an actual game of futsal. I think it's slightly too far removed from normal football for it to yeah. be considered like on par it's almost its own specialist game you need specialist footballs you need special uh the yeah. way that it's officiated with with two referees running one half each rather than uh, just one I can't do that. yeah 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 so it is it's it's its own subset of the game which for whatever reason i mean we could speculate all day long but it just hasn't captured the public's attention in the way that um, like I mentioned just off camera before we started, like the the Masters five aside that you see on Sky Sports in the summer, or the international um, soccer, yeah. like you mentioned, Martin, um, the, um, the the Leisure League's World Cup and stuff like that, um, where you get huge audiences because it's a game that you can just pick up and play and run with. Whereas mm-hmm. futsal, I I, I, I can tell you that. Yeah, now we can change the different view and we with futsal. It was also almost this romantic view. Mm. It has to be dead stuff, it wasn't very hot all. That, that's not the demographic of five sides. No. I remember, football is about getting off your ass out and yeah. engaging in football and arts target. It's all about that. We, you know, we have this thing called couch to World Cup, where we're going to find a player who's never played 11 of sides, and he's going to represent England. Yeah, fair, you can't offer that. You can't offer that. You want to work at universities and, and give loads of people opportunities yeah. to represent their country. Now, people might say, oh, that's not really representing the country, because that's not the FA. Well, you see this, because we're our governor, we, we govern our, our game. So you are representing our country. Yeah. You do get a cap, you get everything paid for, you do get a sponsorship. Mm-hmm. Everything's there. It's very, very, very easy to achieve if you've got the commitment levels and, and the fitness levels. And really importantly to us is that you can't be a professional, you can't hold a professional contract. Yeah. participate in our World Cups. I mean, there's some expert vessels there, and I don't think the rules are within a few months of being, you know, for the our World Cups starting. So it's very different. So aims very different. That's why we go in our games. That's why Leslie Lees can go. We're bringing in a rule now, but you can't go within two meters of a referee. There's absolutely no reason for you to be within two meters of a referee. Yeah, that's our rules now. End of story. Brilliant. Really, really good. I don't know anyone that said that wasn't a good rule. That was leisurely to put that in. Yeah. Leisure. I mean, even the 11 sides, is there any reason to go two metres with a referee? Unless you accidentally run into it or there's just no reason or your, your position is being put down, whatever. But to intentionally go to there anyway within you know, a referee within two metres, that, that should be my fun. Yeah. Because we, the, 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 the owners of leisurely 
David Leone, he's, he, he invented the rules of small sides of football. The FA bought them off him. He was years ahead of, of the small side of the game. And this is another rule that they just wouldn't take it because he's, he, he's, he's created this rule. There's lots of this in football. It's called the NIH syndrome, not invented here syndrome. It's yeah. absolutely rife at the FA because they didn't think of it. We ain't got to introduce it. We might leave it a couple of years and reinvent it and say it's our idea. You know, like they, like they did with the vulnerable wall. So yeah. I think when you look at Leslie's and just set out the politics of it and what they've created as a product, a world product, it's brilliant. And to see futsal failing like this, now it's going to get worse because of um, because of the funding, which is a terrible, terrible shame. And uh, like we said, we know some great referees involved in futsal yeah. and some great footballers involved in football. Great opportunity, but they never got behind five, six, seven signs. With, and now with- the biggest... Is that an easy unaffiliated? Well, this is the thing That's- I was going to say. If, if you have to prop up um, your small sided game with anywhere between 33 and 75 million pounds per season, because that's the numbers that this uh, article said was going to be withdrawn over the next, um, was it three to five years? They're going to claw back that money that would have gone to futsal. Um, that is a crazy amount of money to, to throw at something that has. Very, very little popularity. I mean, I know it's come from a kind of international uh, futsal is, like you say, big in South America or here or there or wherever. But in terms of this country, it's not. And for it to receive that level of funding when there are 11 aside teams now that are going to struggle just to survive through this pandemic, um, it may be you kind of got to let futsal just die off a bit and find its own natural standing within the world of football. Um, mm. And that that might sound harsh. And I, I, listen, we, we've mentioned names of people that we know and are involved with futsal, yeah. but I think that's something we've just got to allow to happen. And if, if in the future, if in five and 10 years, it does build back up, fantastic. But the, at the moment, in this country especially, there are alternatives that don't need millions of pounds of funding because they are self-sustaining. They've got a, a business model where the players will, are happy to pay to play. Um, mm-hmm. and, and that, you know, allow it, allow it to die off. If that's the way it's got to go, um, I, there aren't, I don't want to sound like a prick for saying this, but I don't think there are many people in this country that would genuinely miss futsal. Yeah. I, I, I would agree with that. I definitely 100% agree with that. And when you look at just what, what we've, what we've got, Nearly two hundred thousand players playing every week, fifty weeks a year at Leicester leagues, and that's completely away from the from the national governing body. Why? Why is that the only one that is is, is not affiliated to the FA, but the only one that's thriving and getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger? That's a question in itself. Yeah, that's yeah. a question in itself. I mean, even with the FA trying to stop Leicester leagues getting bigger and county FAs selling their fleas. You know, don't don't engage with unfiliated football. There's actually a rule in now national government bodies rules that says you can't aff- referee affiliated football. It's still massive. Yeah, that tells a story to me. That's why why it was really attractive for me to get involved with them. The streets ahead of the FA, absolute streets ahead. I think that you know the thing is in in particularly in South America, futsal is a means to an end. Yeah. What it does is it produces the next generation of football players, international people like Neymar and Gabriel Jesus, people like that. But actually, in this country, there's only that one lad who plays centre half for Wolves. And that's it. He's the only one who's played futsal for England and then gone on to be a professional footballer. Yeah. I mean, look, correct me if I'm wrong, you know, in the comments, obviously, people can say if I'm wrong. But I'm talking about professional footballer who's reached, you know, the top level, like like the like these Brazilian players have. Well, but also, you just said about it before. Have you have you ever seen a game of football on the TV? No, I, I have actually seen beach soccer on the TV, you know, but not that. So I think that 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 shows how far removed it probably is. And I, on the beach soccer, the, there's a that was aimed very differently, wasn't it? Because the women's game of beach soccer got very popular very quickly, mainly to the uniform they were wearing. And I think, didn't Seth Blatter at some point said, oh, I think the women's shorts should be short, more revealing or something. You know, yeah. that's where that, that's just, that's really, that's where that's at. 
So like, you know, you see, you see beats, and then going back to the Legends tournaments, which is the Masters was quite popular, but the actual, what, what um, companies are going to engage with that when a lot of the fellas are overweight, they don't look very aesthetically easy on the eye, you know, it might be, you know, it's just, it wasn't a product that would work in, in that sort of field. And where, where we've gone with it, whereas, look at these, these are all amateur players, none of these have got a contract, look how good they are. And you, you tie that in with, with the Jamie Vardy scenario. Yeah. When we make an announcement in a couple of months what we're doing next, Jamie Vardy got into the game late, won the Premier League, oldest um, Golden Boots winner, isn't he? And got into England, all, all these stuff because he got in there late. And what we're creating, the Lesson Leagues and the ISF, we're creating opportunities to play for your country in front of millions of people far earlier in your career. If we had that window that that, that we create, we would have got picked up earlier. Absolutely yeah. can't see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely can't see. Then, like, it's that sort of, there's no real coverage at grassroots level. I know some brilliant clubs, Concept, Froome Town, you know, all the Wimborne Town, some great teams who were, who were developing into really good, you know, places to, to view football. It's not going to get on Sally in a million years, unless it's also one of the first rounds proper of the FA Cup. Let's give them more opportunities. Let's, let's do what you think would be great if all of a sudden BBC says, oh, what we're going to do, we're going to show a highlights of that level of football what, what, once once a week, 15 minute slot. Imagine the exposure that would give to those teams. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine what it would do. You've seen what the FA Cup does. You know, the thing that the FA's got right is the FA Cup, I think that a big fund has been put as well. But when you look at what's out there to give people a chance to really look at soccer days. Look yeah. At soccer days. Massive, massive. Why yeah. aren't we doing something similar for the grassroots game? Why aren't we doing something similar for the grassroots All that money goes to the grassroots game. Yeah. We, we, you know, the soccer is brilliant. Class loves it. He's always involved. There's opportunities uh, with a real desire to help. There's opportunities out there, guys. There really, really is. And I think we've got to hold the hands up the FA in certain parts and say, well, 11 side, 11 v 11 has been diminishing for years. And Five of sides yeah. go to the roof, but they've just bought a it. It's too late now. Mm. If they go into five of sides, that's going to absolutely kill futsal. Stone dead, isn't it? Yeah. So they, that's How, the I mean, uh, talking about um, broadcast sports as well, um, I think there's there's space in, uh, especially with the pandemic and, and football being the way it is uh, at the moment, a, a, a place in the broadcast schedule for elite five a side quick, quick games uh leagues that are done in six to eight weeks promotions relegations um you know uh, familiar faces big names all that sort of stuff it just it doesn't even need to be on your traditional like bbc itv sky sports it, there's now mm-hmm. outlets like amazon prime that will pick up stuff like that and just and just run with it or yeah. youtube um their, their premium service as well um, yeah. th- there's scope for it and I can see yeah. it with, with the way that the world is going I can see it happening maybe in the next two to five years that yeah it's tough we've got our own media channels we've got everything yeah. we're set up we just pack the politics with that to be honest a lot of people will engage with us because we're not affiliated to the FA that many people in, in our world of football are so pissed off with the FA let them down that there hasn't really been an alternative we're yeah. a tr- Alternative, mm. and I think we don't get any funding from the government or anyone. Yeah. Age it more, we put it on, you know, maybe fits a little video and it's all what it sends you. Just a little short clip of that. You know, we build a stadium ourselves. Yeah, it's like the centre of Lisbon, a beach in Crete, and we put on a tournament. Why can we do that? How come we can do that? There's nothing like that being on foot solo or nothing else like that. Yeah. So it's grown, grown, grown. We've got lots of big people behind us, and I think it's a shame about foot solo. And I'd, and, I'd, and I'd love to see it thrive. I really was some yeah. good people in there, but equally, you know, five or six or seven sides. It's massive in this game, and it, it needs to be on mainstream TV. There's some really, really good sides out there. Yeah. Great referees, great facilities too. Did you yeah. see what happened last night, by the way, with West Ham? No, what happened? They turned up to the ground, right? And the club doctor. So they, to turn up to the ground, they, they did the they did the exchange with the referee an hour yeah. before the game, right? They started the warm-up and the club doctor came out and said, them two players are positive 
and the gaffer's positive, you need to get them on the stadium now. This is five minutes of walking on. Seriously, I'm not joking. This is this happened. At, this was at West Ham London Stadium last night. They were playing Hull City, um, and they only found out 45 minutes before the game kicked off that yeah. the two players and the manager were positive. And the two players well, and the manager were just knocking about with everyone in that stadium. Yeah, at that point. yeah, and they'd, and they'd already named the team with the two players in it, starting eleven, and the manager obviously David Moyes was there as well, and he's got it. Wow. Are we recording? Yeah, yeah. Didn't didn't. Oh, yeah. I'll pop back in again. Yeah, we'll ju- I'll edit it to look all smooth and shit. So, and you just want to say, <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry to keep you guys on edge for so long, um, but I was just going to mention um, the whole Keith Stroud uh, news article that happened. So Keith Stroud. Um, is starting a game of football as you have the, the match ball is on a little podium as he comes out, picks up the match ball, gives it a kiss and then marches out to start the game. And this caused uproar in, in the daily telegraph and the, the mail and stuff like that saying referees or this particular referee in the era of COVID shouldn't be kissing the match ball. Um, because it's an undue, uh, unnecessary risk that the referees got COVID and now all these players are going to be kicking this ball and they're all going to get COVID as well. Yeah. In reality, you're not going to get COVID really from a match ball. You're more likely to get it from being this close to an opponent or to a match official. If you're getting in their face, they're getting in your face, for whatever reason. Yeah. It was just a story... And it almost is, is building on the back of COVID hysteria. I know that we've mentioned COVID not being taken seriously at all, but we've got to also temper that with let's not get hysterical about COVID and, and put up all these shields and, and stuff around of us. We, we need to still kind of have a semblance of normality. Yeah, There needs to be a balance between where we, we're we seeing teams not taking it seriously at all. And we're seeing the press reaction of going completely over the top and yeah. saying, this is an example of uh, a referee, you know, they're basically saying he's spreading COVID by kissing the match. Yeah. It's not, it's not, it's crazy. Yeah. Well, it's actually funny you should say that, man, because I know that Martin's friend, uh, Lee Probert, when he was refereeing, um, he always used to kiss, I think it was a, a ring finger of his hand. Yeah, yeah. And I know that 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 obviously that was a probably, well, you could ask him about it, but that was probably a ritual thing to, to people who were very close to him and very special to him. I know he used to have a, a look to the sky as well, obviously. That, um, that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, there are things that referees do, and obviously... We, we all know that, that as, as referees, we want we want things to, to fall fairly for us so that we don't end up in difficult situations and things like that. So I do think that there's a little bit of that. But yes, I do think that, you know, could he have done something that was maybe a little bit more for himself almost, like 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 you said, like kissing the, the ring or the, 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 the sky or whatever. Was there another way he could have done that just to, to deflect attention? Because as we know, as referees, we're leading the teams out the tunnel. So we so obviously that game was live on Sky Friday night. Um and it was gonna be right in his face to the camera and, he, and it's something that, you know, as referees we always think about you think when we think about set pieces, we put ourselves in positions to pre- uh, prevent us being blocked off a key incident. Every every position we take on the pitch is is within the idea that we will be able to see anything that may happen. And so to not, and to, and, and, and that's foresight. So to not have the foresight to think, well, it's going to be a camera in my face. I'm leaving the team down because we're live on Sky. It's Friday night, the first game of the season. I think, unfortunately for Keith, um, you know, it might, it might have just been a little bit better for him not to do that because, you know, because you know what people are like. Mate, mate, here's my take on this. What a stupid thing to do. I know Stiles, I've said to you before, when, when I beat Stiles, he was one of the first to send me a really nice message. The first ever football league line was with Stiles, a top, top, top man. A lot of time for Stiles, but come on, lads. That, what, what, you know, 
And sometimes I get a little bit annoyed with these little things that the three do. They're just like players, aren't we? You know, some of our socks on players, and then and then our right sock and our left sock always. And I had I had certain little things like that. But I stopped doing it because no matter what I did there, I'd, I'd have a crap game. And the next game, I'd, I'd, I'd start doing it again, thinking, well, that never worked last time, did it? So why am I doing it? So I got out of it. And um, Saudi, let's be honest, Saudi's have dropped some big mistakes in the past. Yeah. And kissing the ball then didn't help them, did it? You know what I mean? And then to kiss it in a, in a COVID environment was just stupid. It was just stupid. Even if he pretended to kiss it. It's not the actual fact of doing it, like so said. I don't like they could spread anything. It's the image. It's the it's the perception. You know, just why? Why not think he's a clever, clever master, has he? Like that, doing that, maybe put the picture up that was there. Look, that was just stupid, lad. That was just yeah. amazing. And and I don't know if it, it, maybe it's last season he thought, oh well, so I always do it. So I don't know. I don't he know, probably but, in in you know with the amount of testing that's going on, he probably thought along with everyone else involved in the game that day, well, I've been tested for COVID. I'm not positive. No one else is positive. So I'm, I do it all the time anyway. What's the, what's the difference yeah. today? Good thing that way, but look what you just said about David Moyes and West Ham. Well, yeah, West Ham. Um, yeah. Moyes and the two players there. 45, 45 minutes before kickoff. Oh, positive, positive, positive. Just imagine, just imagine the other side. This is why it's stupid to do it. Just imagine if he is positive and there's a picture of him kicking that ball and someone else in that game gets gets it. He couldn't prove it never come from him. It's True. just because what is it? Look at the liability there. I just didn't, I just, unnecessary gamble to take stuff. You're not like that, mate. It's a clever, clever lad. And I just, I just, I just don't know why he's, is it? I just don't know why. You don't need to get people bullets to fire us. Yeah. Why give someone a bullet to fight us? Yeah. You know, oh, all you don't want to be the sense of the sense. You don't always want to be, you know, he's just experienced massive shit. Trust me, that was a stupid thing to do. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm just thinking, I'm just thinking about referees and taking criticism. I'm thinking about you two from the Merseyside area. Um, your distinguished colleague, Mike Dean, also courted a bit of criticism with a camera really close to an incident um, just this weekend, just, just past uh, Everton against West Brom at Goodison Park. Um, I read a, an interesting article actually yesterday, not saying I agree, not saying I disagree, it was, it was in the mail from uh, Martin Samuels. Um, and it, he's, he's clearly a big uh, kind of uh, ally for referees with, with, with the tone of the article, certainly. Uh, I've not read any of his previous stuff on referees, but the tone of the article is very much in support of, of, of officials. Um, and I think he made some interesting points with regard to, you know, yes, Mike Dean did say, he said, go away, you know, you, you, sh- you shouldn't be here now. You, you know, you shouldn't be talking to me now because we know that what the procedure is and we know what the rules are around sort of confronting officials Um in the in the game, we know that there's a 30 minute cooling off period after the match, which is designed specifically for managers to have some time to reflect and to calm down and to speak rationally if there's anything that they want to ask any questions about, and that's all in place for a reason. But it, a good, a really good point made by by Martin in the in the in the article was the fact that you know there was a camera there, right there in that incident, which was picking up absolutely everything that's happening. And, and does that then put pressure on Mike Dean to not be able to kind of manage it because the camera's right there. He needs to be seen to be doing the right thing, which I thought was a really interesting point. But what didn't surprise me was what Martin said uh, with regard to the noises made by the two pundits, where one of which I know was Joe Cole. I don't recall the other one. It might have been Jimmy and Genius, um, where they basically said, uh, oh, it's ridiculous, you know, referees going around doing this, doing that, doing the other. And I bon the whole, he, he went on Sky and then he said, oh, it's a disgrace. I used to say things to Mike Dean all the time. And it's ridiculous how players can boast about abusing referees during their career who think that that's okay. And I think that there's a lot that's come from that, all really well, um, you know, put forward by Martin and I would recommend reading the article from that perspective. 
Uh, but I just think that it's it's a really sorry incident that that's happened because I think it creates negative press for, for arguably our most experienced. Well, definitely if you look at the fixtures, uh, the, the number of fixtures he's officiated, our most experienced referee. If you take the temperature of the reaction of social media, especially Twitter, um, the vast majority of the people who responded to that incident were critical of Mike Dean for doing so. Those were not referees. They were just general football fans. And they're the football fans that they almost uh, instinctively would say, well, it's typical Mike Dean. He wants to be the star of the show. He's only doing this because he's an arrogant prick and all this and that and the other. That's their words, not mine. Yeah. The, the referees and Martin Samuel 100% backed up this as saying, fair play, Mike Dean. That is exactly what you should have done in that situation. And I agree. That's my point. He did exactly what he should have done. And I don't think he would have done it differently had there been a crowd full of people. I think if Billich had come up to him uh, in any circumstance and done those actions, Mike Dean would have shown him the red card because it was it was the right thing to do. Billich was um, going He was there. aggressive, wasn't he, Ant? He was aggressive in his mannerisms. Yeah. Toward, you could say that. And the, there's, um, there's a Twitter account. I, uh, off the top of my head, I think it's Radical Referee, but it might be one of the other ones. And they put a poll up there and it was based off the back of this. And the question was, if... Two people are to have a conversation, which is what Billich was saying. I want to have a conversation with you. That requires the consent of both parties to have a conversation. One person yeah. can't have a conversation with another one that doesn't want a conversation. Yeah. Um, and so in that instance, Mike Dean could have engaged and said, okay, let's have a conversation, in which case that a conversation has formed. But for him to go over ranting and raving and insisting on having a yeah. conversation in that moment, that's not a conversation. That's an aggressive, um, yeah. angry person shouting at someone that isn't mm. going to answer back. Yeah. The only recourse that Mike Dean had in that moment was to send Bilic off. That's yeah. all he could have done. Because the alternative was to what have a conversation where what mm. would Mike Dean have said that would have would have you know we're having a conversation now. There, right in there yeah. wasn't the yeah, yeah, yeah. as well which was picking up everything they were saying exactly you know have that kind of uh dialogue in yeah. that moment where really you you if you are going to have that conversation in any way shape or form you want to have it in the dressing room yeah this, this was a conversation there's there's balance yeah. from both sides it's yeah. not one of us just going listen here dickhead you're going to listen to me what i say yeah, yeah. what you said five minutes ago i don't agree with and this is why which is basically the vitriol that billich had in engaging yeah. mike dean at that moment um yeah. from a referee's point of view and from every rational football fan's point of view mike dean did the right thing he was 100 percent correct to yeah. to respond the way he did mm. some of the things there you know is, is from the Whittle, not from Merseyside. Well, yeah, no, but I think he is, he is, he is from Merseyside, isn't yeah, he? Really? We have a lot of things, but like, uh, but when, when, when people from Birkenhead and the Whittle go abroad, they're all scouts. Oh, yeah, I'm from Liverpool. We went to our own one who from the Whittle. Very convenient. Flacky scousers, them. Flacky scousers, not real, not oh, like us. Good. However, however, not on a serious subject in my team, um, we've discussed the evolution of my team of what he was what he is and it all goes right back to this like when you're a FIFA referee you don't act like my team does now when you stop being a FIFA referee you tend to act like my team now because then people definitely change how they, how they operate you telling me you telling me those two didn't know what was going on there that there was camera camera right there and everyone would be picked up because there's no crowd yeah. totally biased that was probably a poorly Five billets to try and get some one you know, percent answers that they talk about out of him, and it backfired on him. Backfired on him. Well, I don't know what he thought was going to be the end result. I don't know. You know, does Mike does, does Mike Dean say, oh, well, "I'll have a look at half time when I come back, and you know, I'll, I'll, I'll give you the penalty or whatever"? I just don't see what people are trying to achieve. It's just macho nonsense. Mm. And the important issue is that that's what that's how those attacks on Satyans. Hockey happen. That's exactly what happens. That's the evolution the other way. People look at that and think, yeah, I 
can do that. What I'm going to do that to someone who's on a, on a pitch in the centre of London, with no police officers. Might just happen, might just happen to have a, have a camera. Might, maybe. Totally different beast. That, that sort of thing here that he did, it's, it, that's, uh, I believe, truly believe, that is the beginning of the evolution of uh, someone getting assaulted at grassroots level. Because their game it evolves, it gets worse. I did a blog on it, maybe put a link up for the evolution of crime. You know, people would steal uh, the back of a, of, a, of a car, a bit of sign on the back, Vauxhall or um, Volkswagen, the Beastie Boys had the Volkswagen sign around here. Those who don't remember the Beastie Boys, they come off the back of a car. And I know people who just have them on the bedroom door, all different type of just collect them, and no one said anything. And then when you take the back, the, the sign off the back of the caboose, you open the boots and you rub the seals. And then you open the car door, and you take the radio, and then before you know it, you're taking the car, you have a car crash, you kill it in some five seconds. Now, people might say that's dramatic, but that's my blog describes that. Going at someone in the face on a pitch like that, like Billets did, is taking a sign off the back of the car. The, the carrying it on afterwards on social media is taking the, the tools out of the boots of the car and selling them. The starting on you in, in, in the car park and threatening you is taking the radio and punching you and kicking your head in as the car crash. So if you go right back and you address it robustly in the beginning and stop these billeters and the Marinos and the Warnocks who were constantly seeing on TV that this behavior is acceptable. When you address it in the beginning there, you won't get to that car crash. That's why it's really important that we need to flash this up. And what doesn't happen, which is shameful, the LMA, the League Managers Association, never, ever comment on it. Mm. Have you ever heard the LMA say, actually, we believe that sort of behavior is unacceptable? You hear the PFA come out and say things about various, never hear the LMA come out. The LMA never come out and say, actually, no, that is not the image we want of our members. It just don't. So there's another little angle I think we should approach. Future. Go to the LMA and say, could you tell me what your official stance is on this sort of behavior live yeah. on TV? And what message does that send to our young future players and managers? Yeah, because they're not going to, like, and no one, as far as I'm aware, like you say, from the LMA or the PFA or whoever have have come out in this instance and say, yep, Billich is right. We're sorry to the referee on this occasion. Um, uh, Billich shouldn't have done that. Uh, Mike Dean was right to send him off. The, I'm, I'm by staying silent, it's it's not, it's, I'm not saying they're condoning them. But when there's a saying, isn't it, along the lines of when good people see bad but do nothing, it's as if they've done the bad thing themselves. You need to speak out as a good person and say, we shouldn't be doing that. Shouldn't be doing that to the referee. Uh, and let's condemn the people that do. Because if you don't, like Martin has said, uh, these ripples that come out from these actions that we see ultimately will lead to a, a Satyam hockey or whoever the next referee gets assaulted on the, on the pitches on a grassroots mm. Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. Absolutely 100% right. I'm going to get evidence to you know, Crime goes right back. Is it, you know, soft drugs lead to hard drugs, you know. You know, you remember people might sit this is this, they go, oh my God. But it, everything evolves, so me, and it just gets worse and worse and worse. And it's the snowball effect. And that's why we're not addressing it. And that, that, at that level, robustly, when do we start addressing it? Mm. Robustly, in someone's eyes, is that what we do? Is that, is that what we do? We, you, you can't get banned for life now. You know, it's like a sound like ban. It's like fans and rock and all shit. It just ain't out there. Yeah. It just isn't yeah. there. So there's no real... Then there's the can go play in a false name, which is why we said, if you see that lousy assaulted Satyam playing, video him, we give you 100 quid. Give, video him, get it to us, we give him 100 quid. Prove it to him, give him 100 quid. Because that's, that's the opportunity to open. And the reason it's open is because there's no ID cards. As you said earlier, there's no way of... Companies playing, doing other countries, I can't do massive things yeah. that need to be changing here. And just going on doing the same old thing, saying I'm expecting to get better, is, is just not the right thing. It's insanity. Do. It's the definition of insanity. Doing the same thing, but expecting a yeah. different result is insanity. Uh, I used to say that all the time about Alan Pardew when he managed Newcastle. He used to pick the same team every week and keep getting beat. Why yeah. do we keep getting beat? 
Uh, but going on, that would have been, you know, any of those big, big losses getting beat 5 0, definitely have been the referee's fault. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this week, not be 5 0, not be 4 0. The, 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 the penalty, a photograph of the penalty, put in a pony position like that. That was a penalty. I want the referee to phone me and apologize. Oh, well, really? Is your goalie going to phone you and apologize for letting four goals in your know, bed? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, found, I found myself getting into arguments on Twitter with yeah, people. I, 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 I see retweets from other accounts that's, that will blame the ref for their 8 2 loss. And I will stick up for the ref and say, come on, man, surely you can't be serious blaming the ref for your eight goals. And their response is, you weren't there. You didn't see the ref. You didn't see his performance. You put out. And I'm like, well. I remember doing it to a Forest fan. I said about, I think it might have been Stoudy. And I went, I just snapped shot at the league table. And said, you've dropped 44 points. And in those games, how many goals did the referee score? Yeah. Why? Why is he cost you the league? Why is he? Why is this one incident of an offside or a penalty, not giving a free kick or not just allowing another goal? Yeah, cost you the league, mate. Yeah. Why are you paying them hundreds of thousands of pounds a month? Really? Yeah. It's just this entitled nonsense that these fans have. I paid me money for a consumer yeah. fee. And at what point? And because players do it as well. Oh, the ref in our game was shite today. Yada yada yada. At what point do referees go on and say? Yeah, I was refereeing the game today and the centre forward missed a, an absolute sitter from two yards away. Goal was out. What an absolute dickhead. You'll never yeah. see it happen. You'll never see it happen. Well, and the sooner it does, the better. Mm. Well, of course, all the referees are all sort of getting older, but all conditions don't go for the press. Oh, don't say anything. Don't Shh. Move. Shh. Oh, be careful on your shoot to weed, Mark. Why? Why? Just give me a reason why. Oh, I remember this song. Oh, put my head in. People come on our page and go, you can't talk about your case. It might, pre- it might prejudice your case. But can you show me any evidence where that's happened? It hasn't happened. It hasn't happened. It's just we're all conditioned to go, you can't talk about our red card today. Yeah. Because why? why? Oh, because uh, it could prejudice the hearing. Okay. Uh, so when that red card happens in the Liverpool 11 game and it's shown to 5 million, million trillion people, does that prejudice the case? So why does a Facebook page uh, five thousand people on there going to prejudice your case? Stop being in your best. Yeah, the the, 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 the the people that are sharing those those it's incidents ridiculous. as well. Well, they they just obviously want the support and the help and the guidance of referees who are probably more experienced than them and maybe a high level than them. Whatever they're they're not putting it on social media to. Um, mm-hmm. You know, for for any other reason other than for a little bit of maybe self support or self soothing after a traumatic incident, no. well, you you do get people that are like, "Oh, you can't talk about it. Don't talk about it." Oh, and they've all got a speech in football. All those people that do that badge collectors, I call them. Yeah, and I know these same those same people who do that will come to me privately on mass. You know, I do do it. That's all social media. Yes, goes on. Yeah. And then I'm going to go up people on the page. And I know 100% that's not what they think. Yeah. But they think the people who give them co finals, who might give them a promotion. Yeah. They want them to think yeah. that's how they think. It's not the most disingenuous nonsense I've seen. It's mad. It? You're just better off saying nothing at all, Martin. You're just yeah. better off saying nothing at all. Because then you're not sort of brown nose in the FA. Yeah. But if Willie, you're not. Going the other way, which is also probably not the right way to go about it. Yeah, but let people have an opinion. If people are going to say, we're taking our page, just be nothing like our page. It's why it's so popular. We talk about everything. We talk about absolutely everything. Yeah. And we back it up with evidence. And when people say, oh, you shouldn't do that, it's better. Every time I've gone back and say, could you give me, show me an occasion where talking about your rest red cards or your abandonment is prejudiced at peace? Not yeah. one that's going forward. Not even the ones who said you shouldn't do it. Did you show me what, what way do you think that way? They only thought that way because they're being told by the FA. It's not the right thing to do. And when you look at it again, this is another reason why we get bullies. Because we feel we just can't, we just got to take it. Yeah. No, no, no don't, don't, don't talk about it. Why? Well, because we've been told not to. Why have we been told not to? I don't know. I don't know. It, all you, we've always been conditioned. Get in the corner, take a stick, let the FA deal with it. 
well, actually, yeah, if I am dealing with it, yeah. I'm not dealing with it. So what happens then? And that's the problem. It's this big chasm that's really filled the way going to talk about it. When the FA don't deal with it properly, when there's people getting cautions, they're going to the massive issue three times, we're going to talk about it. I don't care if people who work for London FA think that we're stopping people getting into refereeing. No, we want people to get into refereeing. Knowing that, that that is a realistic thing that could happen to you, yeah. in a couple of weeks, have proven to be assaulted. FA's figures, not mine. And they don't mention it, of course. They don't do any, any way of saying, actually, this is how it's going to be. Here's the right process. Here's maybe some like de escalation methods that we use. No, not discussed. Yeah. And when you think about it in real terms, that's a bloody yeah. with, with With social media, with Ref Support UK uh, especially, it's on demand. Everyone's got a phone in their pocket. You can get at, straight after your game has happened, you can pull out your phone, go on the Facebook page, and type out your whatever situation that you found yourself in and get immediate support. If you were to submit your report and wait for the FA to get back to you, if they get back to you, um, you're talking about a few days. Now, in those few days, in your head, you've repeated this incident, this trauma, this whatever has happened to you a few times, and you've made it worse because that is the nature of humanity. That is what we are as animals. Mm-hmm. We'll think about it. We'll overthink it. We'll, mm-hmm. we'll blame ourselves. We'll think, can we do things differently? In that whole time, you've got these two pathways. One is immediate support. The other is support that comes a little bit later on, further down the line, but from the official kind of yeah. the FA source. I know yeah. which one of those two I'd want. I'd want immediate reassurance that yeah. it's not as bad as you think it is. Um, here's some ideas for you to think about. But if you do start having these thoughts, you can always follow it up with more comments. And there yeah. are hundreds, if not thousands of referees on collectively our social media pages that will 99.9% of the time support the referees. Mm. You do get a few people that are a bit snipey, but they get shot down very quickly. Um, and and this, is, this, this is only a good thing for referees. It's like you say, no, none of us want to, to stop the recruitment, retention, and progression of referees. If anything, we all want more referees and for those referees to be mm. as good as they possibly can. So yeah. for these people and their mentality of um, keep quiet, you want this, this is your agenda, it's really not. And I don't mm. know why or how people get off on saying what your agenda is or what my agenda is or what Nathan's agenda is. Yeah. They, they don't engage with us, but they do snipe and, and, and do this stuff in the background. Oh, don't, don't join that page. Don't talk to this person. It'll have mm. a negative effect on your refereeing career. You want to be a good referee? Don't listen to this. Don't talk to this person. It's madness. It's absolute I mean, madness. Nine times out of ten, we, we get a lot of fashion. It happens right in the beginning with us. Oh my god! This support. Don't don't go near them. Why? Well, the FA don't like them. But well, they don't want the FA to like them. They're not bothered. Yeah, but yeah, but no, but yeah, but no, but yeah, but that's all you got. You can justify it. Do I start saying to people? Right, so whoever says it to you, they tell the face. Right, do us a favour. Scouts have said, can you put that down on an email to me? Looking forward to it. Never happened. Yeah. Not once did that happen. Not once did that ever happen. Don't engage with them because we don't like it. And nine times out of ten, it's also people in county FAs who aren't doing what we do for free. Yeah. They can't do a budget for them. They can't do mentoring schemes and coaching schemes for free because they haven't got the... Why have we got the manpower to do that? They haven't. Why have we got more coaches in the Southwest than core? None of them get paid. None of them have to zip them for paid. But why, why can we do that? And when we eventually be able to navigate that all over the country, the coaching school, we know there's armies of people out there who will work for us. Free. You don't want to work for the county of eight. You might have been hit on by them. You know, how many people have put a blog up to be saying about um, how long have you been in the and never had an FA Cup game? Then someone comes along for two years, you've got an FA Cup game early on. Or the fine rounds on the line, loads because they fell out. Who nominates people to the FA to do FA Cup qualifying games? That's the FA. So we have all these little little bits of control that they have. I will nominate you for an FA Cup game. We do go with that. If you, that's what goes on. That's what I mean. Oh, yeah. We challenge the FA about it. No one will put a time in writing of what we do because they know what we, what we do is the right thing to do. RDOs are losing the jobs. 
ideally getting going down from full-time jobs to two days a week. I haven't really gone out there with this yet. I'm getting loads of information, but also up your area as well. But our deals are being put down to two days a week. Two days a week. So therefore, when we have a game and they need to get hold of someone, who do they get hold of? Yeah. Who do they get hold of? I think the worry is, Martin, is, and then I've said this before, there's a, there's a county in the north of England that has a dedicated hotline where they can reach people. 24 hours a day but that's one county and there's 52 in the country mm. so i think that um well, you know i'll always think get these we've had our hotline for three years yeah not one plan tfa advertises it that tells me a story i think yeah. they want to me they want to phone their own county so they can shut things down that, yeah. i'm not saying oh the county tfa that's doing that up there is like that why, yeah. why would you start something as an overhead that's already there free of charge. Yeah. National, 24 7. We never do. Yeah, yeah. And so that's what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. So when I'm talking to referees, I'm saying, your county FA hasn't got a hotline. You need to ring reps. Oh, thank you, mate. That's- I think that it's, it's really, really important that if you want to have that support and you don't know many colleagues, who you, personally, I mean, like, you know, you haven't got numbers of your colleagues. Uh, to say, or to ring them or to say or send a message to them and say this is what happened in my game and you want that support but you don't want to put it out because you either feel suppressed by other reasons or you 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 you, you don't want to you, you feel like maybe it was your fault or whatever then having that number to ring is is, is really really important and, I, and I, I, I've always said that because I think it's I think that you know it is about finding the balance and if they don't want the audio to know you're getting support, then it's another good reason to ring the number. But um, the thing is, that it all depends on the level of support that you get. Just it? In a county, what we found I'm just, okay. Yeah, okay. So, sorry, Martin. I was just saying that in a county where they've got a hotline, you know that there's a really good support base for referees. Where they don't, they don't. Yeah. Well, what, we, what we're finding is, mates, sorry, sorry to put me in. No, no. Um, when they phone us, they phone us because they don't want the county FA to know. Yeah. Because we feel a bit like, if I tell him, I felt a bit threatened today. Yeah. If I tell him or her that I, I didn't feel comfortable today, didn't feel confidence. They might not give me a full final. I'm going for level six this year. They might not promote me. That's a realistic thing to think. That's what people do. They might think I'm a nobhead, but I can't cope with that. They won't give me a local derby. So when you can't go there and talk about a weakness, bear in mind men are like this, it's one of the mental health issues. Yes. When they talk to them, they want to show that. They can show that weakness to me. You don't have to tell me my name, of course. You don't have to tell them nothing. First thing I say, look, you don't have to tell me your name. So I, don't, I won't record your number unless you want to. If you do give us the number, we follow up the next week. Is that all right, mate? If you can't do anything help you, are you there? Always absolutely blown away that we've remembered them. Yeah, and what's really important is we also I really appreciate someone saying it's not your fault, mate. Yeah, I'm not the only one. I get this is two, three, four a day at certain times, particularly pre season, because people are getting given games that they really shouldn't be given, get given really. People don't give it either. So, like, there's lots of things that go on where they will not go to the county FA or the FA. By the nature of the beast, they don't get a true picture of what goes on there. They come to us. And we do log it or we do log it. We just, we can say, they call it, we are, don't know who, yeah, but like, that's the main reason, they about it. That's why the FA and all the county of A's should push our hotline because we're independent. Yeah. We're independent. And now we're going to go down this route, uh, this route with the app, the uh, whistleblowing app, mm-hmm. which is completely anonymous. I'll put a link up, but that's Anthony too. Completely, you know, we're going to pay for it. You can report whatever you want into, into this facility. They will investigate it for you. Mm-hmm. Absolutely invest. Go to whoever it is, yeah. and they don't even know who sent it in. It's completely anonymous. Yeah. It's massive in corporate, corporate. We're teaming up with them because we know there's people out there who will tell what goes on, particularly with refereeing, the bullying that goes on, the really, really dodgy stuff that goes on. But you don't want any comeback on them. If they do it anonymous to us, all we do, not us to the other third party. They then go to that person and say, look, this person's named you. Well, you've been named. This is what happens. 
this is the date, here's the evidence, and you tell me that's wrong or right. You don't have to know who it is. And if they and even if when the police spoke to them, he went to them on one case and we need to know where this is going from. They said, we can't, it's completely encrypted. We don't know where it where it comes from. So they're not gonna say, Oh, I never got promoted once uh, and the RDO said I was shite. No, we're not gonna see with that. The true, true bullying, true, true discrimination. We're gonna offer that free. And if we get a good enough sponsor, which it looks like we've got, we're gonna give that free to every referee. They've got that little completely anonymous method of reporting discrimination, bullying, anything else world to us or to the third party dealers. But that's that's a game changer. Because one of the one of the things we've found is if you take it out of control of the county of A's, when you take it away from them, this is another reason why the hotline works. You're more likely to get told the truth. And then we go and get the answers, we go public and we go social media, it gets in the papers, they then listen then. And it's that it's that method, mate, which is why I believe not one county FA in the country, I don't know, I think Devon did it, put beside our hotline. Because the true intention, in my opinion, would be wrong. They don't want to know. They don't want us to know how bad it is. We're going to say, oh, anyway, why have you been doing enough about it? That's where it sits. Yeah.